this is something that is very dear to our hearts because it's a collaboration that uh, Lee Edelcourt has been doing with uh, Birgitta de Vos in the Netherlands as well as artisans in Mali. So we'd like to share it with you just briefly. Um, and that is the uh, tradition of Bogolans. Uh, Bogolans is of course um, very renowned uh, mud cloth from Mali and Burkina Faso. And the word actually uh, Bogolofini, Bogolan, Bogolan Fini, uh, literally means uh, fermented mud cloth. Um, this tie dye technique uh, is associated with several Malian uh, ethnic groups, but the Bambaran version is the one which perhaps you have seen uh, in the West. Um, and in the language, um, the word actually means uh, earth, is Bogo. Uh, lan is uh, meaning with or by means of, and fini means cloth. So it literally means um, earth by the means of cloth. So I'm sure uh, many people in the audience are familiar with these traditional examples of bogolon. Um, although it's translated literally as mud cloth, bogolon actually refers to the clay slip um, which has a high iron content and produces a black pigment when it's uh, applied to hand spun or hand woven cotton textiles. Um, and in Mali, the town of San is actually uh, the main center for Bogolan making. Um, this technique uh, begins with dyeing in which the, the cloth is soaked. So it's made in a dye bath um, with leaves that are from the Lenglamla tree. Uh, I apologize if I mispronounce it. And uh, they have been mashed or boiled or soaked. And so then they turn yellow and the cloth is dried in the sun uh, before it's then painted with the designs that you see here on the screen. Uh, they're painted with uh, utensils which are usually made with metal or with wood. Now the paint is a special mud which is collected from riverbeds and it's actually fermented in a jar for around a year. Uh, and because of the chemical reaction that is happening between the mud and the cloth, um, you have these amazing brown colors which uh, become the color card of the, of the textiles. Eventually the brown is, um, sorry, eventually the yellow parts is washed off. Um, they apply soap or bleach to get rid of it and then you can have um, beautiful white, um, uh, white grounds. Now, traditionally, the cloth is believed to have uh, the power to absorb dangerous forces released in life-threatening circumstances. And that's why Bogolan is also referred to as medicine cloth. So in Malian culture, Bogolans are actually quite uh, symbolic and very spiritual. Uh, they've been worn by hunters to serve as camouflage. They're used as ritual protection and as a badge of status and of honor. Um, women who are wrapped in bogolans after their initiation into adulthood, which uh, includes genital cutting, uh, and immediately after they have, uh, they give birth to children, um, the cloth is believed to be able to absorb the dangerous forces uh, that are associated with those transitions in life. Now the patterns, whether they're geometric or stripes, have all kinds of meanings. Uh, they're quite rich, of course, in, in significance. Um, sometimes they have crocodiles, sometimes they have other objects, mythical concept, concepts, even proverbs can be expressed in the Bogolans. And I would say in the last 30 or 40 years, um, it has really become the national symbol of, of Malian culture. Now, as of uh, around the year 2000, um, especially after in the early 90s, there was a change of government in Mali. Um, there has been a um, different processes to try to make the Bogolans in a quicker way, up to six times faster and a little bit cheaper. Uh, this is quite a tragedy. And so um, recently, especially because of the uh, impossibility of traveling to and from Mali, um, a collective of designers were invited to collaborate with local artisans um, to keep this, these traditions alive and to keep the real way of making Bogolans alive. 
So um, this new collection or this new brand, you would call it, is called RRR, um, which uh, is the name which uh, represents Atelier Autodidact Anti-Algorithms. So everything about it, of course, is made by hand, made by love, made with nature, you could say. And therefore, it's the antithesis of, um, of artificial intelligence. So it's, it's the made by human mentality, which is so important in textile making, and therefore um, very important to us to help continue these traditions. Now, this project has been um, uh, supported by um, the Ethical Fashion and Lifestyle Initiative, which is run by Simone Cipriani, the EFI. And this is a program also of the International Trade Center, which is an agency of the United Nations. And therefore it's also financed by uh, the EU with its Emergency Trust Fund for Africa. So all stages of the making in RRR are of course all by hand, as you can see in these beautiful images um, from Brigitte Duvos, who is one of the creative directors of the project in collaboration with um, Lee Edelcourt. And what's interesting is that uh, in traditional weaving, um, men were doing the weaving and women would handle the dyeing. Uh, the weaving would take place on very narrow looms, about 15 centimeters wide, which is just under six inches for those of you in the United States. And then they would be stitched together to make bigger pieces of cloth. Um, some of these would be between one to one and a half meters in, in size, which is three by five feet. And uh, one of uh, Brigitte's ideas was actually just to sell the uh, individual pieces of the weavings without joining them together. And they become like these amazing hanging totems that you see in the other images. They're quite popular and they, they sell like hotcakes. So these wall hangings have um, different motifs to them, scarification patterns, other uh, interesting uh, symbols and motifs. And one of the uh, other successful elements of this project is the amazing, not just the name, but the amazing logo. And uh, apart from what it stands for with the A's, it's also interesting how A is the first uh, letter in the alphabet. And uh, like the, the artisans and the collective says, we are and we like to stay beginners. So this idea of always being a student of weaving or always being a student of life is very important and interpreted in all of these pieces. The collection, apart from the wall hangings, also has uh, covers for furniture, such as these chairs, as well as cushions and floor coverings, uh, floor cushions, I should say, made in these beautiful uh, natural mud dye colors which range, of course, from browns to include darker shades of almost black. They're all done on uh, natural cloth, which is grown by hand and completely handmade. And in some cases, stitched together to make these larger pieces, such as in, um, in the cushions, always with this beautiful uh, hand stitch which is also used to sign each piece with the logo being hand stitched into them, almost like reminding us that these pieces have so much soul to them. So what's also interesting about this project, as Lee has explained in last year's catalog of Talking Textiles, is that it also is um, a discourse about Africa's position in the world of design uh, what we now call Afro-modernism, which is harking back to uh, previous periods in the West when we looked to Africa for abstract inspiration, especially for motif and form, and really that it becomes part of a new language of design, which is taking not just Mali, but the whole continent forward and into our lives in other parts of the world. So if anybody would like to learn more about the ah uh, 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 project, um, definitely feel free to uh, connect on their website, which is four times a coop.com. You, if you're a wholesaler or if you have a store, you can also email the hello email address and they'll be able to send you more information about these, uh, these special products. For those of you on Instagram, there's also an amazing Instagram page 
which you can follow with the handle, which is at the top there.